uh, thanks very much for having me. Um, it's a really interesting um, opportunity to have a talk in front of this crowd. So thanks for coming on a crappy Friday morning. Um, I'm notoriously terrible at being organised for these things and I spend way too long thinking about it and then not enough time putting a presentation together, which meant that I flew home from interstate last night, went into the office at 4.30 this morning to put many pages of thoughts into a slideshow that I realised was way too long. Um, so 20 to 25 minutes I'll be racing through. Um, the topic of space got me pretty excited and I started thinking about lots of other things that I could talk about other than Bureau North and myself. Um, but uh, I looked on the Creative Mornings website and in LA for this month there's a guy from NASA's Space Research Division talking, so I think that he'll definitely trump this presentation. Um, space, so, you know, I'm trying to think about philosophically what I could discuss without getting too stuck in talking about projects because uh, I gave a talk to some uni students recently and I showed lots of our work and at the end they told me they could have looked at our website. <laughs> so, um, so there's no photos of any of our work here and uh, I'm not going to talk about projects. Um, but you can go to the website. Um, so space, I thought I'd look at the design industry space, design industry space um, the Bureau North space and then my creative personal space. So I studied really broadly because I really didn't know what I wanted to do and uh, the way I was taught industrial design in Melbourne, I knew I really didn't want to do that. Um, they had us designing colanders and mobile phones and, and irons and stuff that just I wanted to throw at them. So um, I studied broadly and realised that the design industry is this massive, vast place where almost anything possible. And when I finished uni, there were lots of very large design studios that did everything uh, and kind of dominated the industry. Um, now, I think it's slightly different, and I think that there's a lot of specialist niche companies that are really, really good at a particular thing and collaborate with other specialists. And I think that's a really exciting space to be in, and um, I think that's more the way the industry's headed. This sounds weird. Um, so, yeah, Bureau North's a tiny dot in the big ocean, even of Melbourne design, when you look around and think of how many hundreds of design studios, and they're all generally pretty exceptional at a certain thing, um, and the people that are running those studios and working there are doing it because they're incredibly passionate about their work, not because they're getting paid great or it's an amazing lifestyle where you get to, you know, sit on a beach and think. They, they do it because they love the work, and therefore the work's generally really good. So. Um, we think that we're pretty good at what we do in our tiny little space. Um, and I think that um, things that have influenced the direction of Bureau North within the design industry, uh, I pretty strongly believe in an authentic authenticity of what you do. And we've, I, when I was developing Bureau North, we had people coming with opportunities, can you design this, can you design this? And of course, as a young person with no money and a business that had to feed people, we'd go, sure, we'll do it. And if you're not authentically passionate about the particular type of work you're doing, it shines through. And I think whenever we've done a job that isn't right in our sweet spot, it's harder than all the other jobs and you probably don't get the same results. So I really firmly believe in referring people to other companies if something comes our way that's not particularly spot on. And generally that creates a bit of a network and dialogue between other people because we get those referrals uh, in return. Um, I read a hell of a lot of books. Um, I'm a terrible sleeper, so I read a lot just to pass the time. Um, there's a book Malcolm Gladwell wrote a couple of years ago now, and lots of people have expanded on his theory since, but this idea of 10,000 hours to make you an expert in something, whether it's a runner or a designer or whatever you are. Um, and before I started Bureau, I was a pretty nationally competitive athlete and I have sort of grew up from the age of 12 um, swimming every morning from 4.30 um, and so between 12 and 22 or 23 when I decided that I wasn't um, Thorpey or something, um, I realised that you just have to do a shitload and work harder than anybody else that you come across to be really good at something. 
And uh, often I'd look at other people that were at the top of their game and, you know, they'd be relaxed. They'd look great. It'd be easy. You know, I'd look at them and think, fuck, how do you, how do, you do that? Um, and it's just because they've done so much of it for so long and worked so hard. And I can't think of anyone that I admire that's really successful that hasn't been through that process of just literally destroying themselves in the pursuit of something. Um, and that's the Gladwell theory that, you know, 10,000 hours, roughly 10 years, or makes you an expert in something. Um, so combine authenticity, doing what um, we're passionate about at Bureau North, with um, a real commitment to focusing on the technical capacity and details, um, and specialising, and probably looking at future markets, because when I started, um, the, you know, at the moment where I would say in the top couple of companies nationally that work in the wayfinding and design space, and when I started the business, there wasn't really anyone, um, but we kind of forecast this future that might exist, uh, and started working towards it. <laughs> um, and I think that's really relevant now as companies evolve and digital mediums become more prevalent and um, I think people that strive to be good at something now are, uh, you know, operating in yesterday's space. Um, so that's the design industry space as far as I can sort of analyse it and that's how I see it. Um, Bureau North check the website, but I'll give you a very quick synopsis. Um, I started the company uh, almost 10 years ago through kind of an accident. I was freelancing uh, at quite a few different companies. I got a couple of jobs of my own. Um, I had just returned from Germany, not wanting to, and in Germany I started a little practice with some friends that was called Bureau Sherpa, which was our initials. Bureau means uh, studio in German. Um, so... Wanting, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> um, wanting to pretend I was still in Germany, I called my company Bureau North. No real bravery, isn't it? You just suck, uh, and it would be a pain to change it now. So that's what it is. Um, it's a practice of the oscillate between 15 and 20 people. Um, we've got uh, two directors, Finn and myself. Uh, studio manager, we've got architects, landscape architects, graphic designers, industrial designers. Um, all of which contribute to developing evidence-based design. Um, our kind of mantra is that we improve your user experience in the built environment. So we work on things like hospitals, airports, cities, <coughs> universities, commercial buildings, uh, for councils, anywhere that has people and environment that they need to interact. Um, so basically we design systems and behaviour um, so, you know, looking at it really simply, an airport will probably say to us, um, we get a bucket load of people coming in here, we want to move them through a complex procedure in the middle here, ticketing and security, we want them to spend as much money as we can get them to in the retail, and then we want to get them to a gate without missing their flight. So, within that you've got a space that needs to talk to people that are generally stressed out and don't know what they're doing. Um, the organisations usually know what they want people to do, but they talk in what they want, not what the people want. So we sort of see ourselves as a bridging mechanism that goes in, understands the user, and delivers the right information at the right time to get the desired outcome. There's this quote that I've got that sounds complicated, but it's the best one that I've come across. It's the wrong one. Um, the purpose of design is to guide the user through artefacts towards certain behaviour called for by the program. So I really like that quote because I think that design has to be a strategic delivery of a service. Otherwise you're sort of developing something for yourself which I'd say is more akin to communicating an art medium or something. So the purpose of design is to guide a user. You've always got a user in design whether you're building a brand or a chair or a wayfinding system. Um, through artefacts, whatever you're designing, towards a certain behaviour you want someone to do something, if you're doing a brand, you want them to believe in the brand or buy or acknowledge its existence or something, um, called for by the program. If there wasn't a strategy involved in design, none of us would have jobs because you know, our, our objective is to deliver a result. Um, so we design systems and behaviour. Um, the output of that is information and, and other outcomes. So we design 
signage, graphic systems, products that are generally part of that process, digital mediums, apps, kiosks, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and those two things drive the collaboration and the skills that we have in the office. So, you know, until recently, the idea of wayfinding apps was a relatively um, unresolved concept. There was lots of ideas and technical discussion about how it could occur, but it hadn't really got to the point where it could be done particularly well. Um, so we didn't really have anyone in the office that could do that because we are there to deliver a service and if it couldn't be done, we didn't need that capacity. Now we're kind of decided that we're going to invest in that because our clients keep asking it for us and because we can see forecasting that in 12 to 18 months uh, it's going to be easily technically possible so that drives the collaborations and the skills that we have in the office. So it's an interdisciplinary design firm in the sense that we have lots of skills geared towards delivering a common outcome. Um, so that's Bureau North. Um, I think, yeah, just back on that, one of the big things about Bureau North is that um, because I studied um, the different disciplines and because most of our work involves collaborations with other professionals, whether they're architects or landscape architects or digital people, um, we we probably, I like to think we have a much more collaborative and respectful approach to design authorship. So um, the guys that design the work in the office present the work and the guys that design the work that win awards go up and get the awards. Um, and the guys that are seniors in the company that are valued by the company get equity in the company. So ultimately it's selfish because I want to get out one day. <laughs> Um, and I want the best people to still be there. Um, but it's, it sort of comes around this idea of collaboration and creating an entity that fosters all of that and retains it and continues on because if I wanted to be um, Soren Luckin's design and you know retire one day because who wants to run Soren Luckin's design when I'm not there? Um, I think I would have done it. There's a lot of design studios out there that do that, but for me it was about creating like we create um, you know, a, a project and an objective and then deliver it. For me, when I started Bureau North, it was more about creating an entity and delivering that rather than creating an ego sign like in Suzanne Street, I think. Um, that said, my, probably my favourite part of running Bureau North is still the creative process, which is unfortunate because I don't get to do enough of it. Uh, running a business with 15 people in, you know, we've got jobs in <coughs> Brisbane, Perth, um, Sydney, Tasmania, um, and a couple overseas means that I spend a lot of my time travelling and running the office. But my creative environment um, really is the most exciting for me, the most exciting space for me, when we've got a great environment to work in and a challenging project. And I get bored really quickly, so if we've got a job that's too simple or really straightforward or a crappy client, I get really, really bored very quickly and phase out and, you know, there's people in the office that do this to me every now and then and they'll be talking to me about a brief and I start thinking about something else, no matter how hard I try not to make it look like that. Um, so the environment's really important and um, what I was talking before about having a respectful um, design authorship environment is really important because if people don't feel like their ideas contribute to an outcome that they're going to own, they don't contribute, or they don't contribute fully. Um, if that environment doesn't embrace um, fuck-ups, then they won't take risks, and if you don't take risks, you're not designing. So we, we manage our jobs really carefully um, on a risk scale and we have a Monday morning meeting on every job. Um, and that manages the risk to the client, but we generally try to push the boundary as far as we possibly can with the design taking risks, um, because otherwise we're going to be sitting in two years when some other bright start starts the studio and comes and beats us. Um, so the environment, the environment's really important and the challenge is really important. And I think um, at the 
moment, the challenge is generally around the economy because every client comes saying we want this, but we've got this much money. Um, and so we're delivering, I think at the moment, we're delivering a lot more than we did even three years ago for the same money. Um, which is just the commercial reality of an economy with a government that doesn't know what it's doing and a worldwide market the way it is. Um, I need um, time in my life where I don't think about um, business, family, um, employee whose girlfriend dumped him, um, employee who's got an uh, offering on a house and needs him to go as a referral, um, a lawyer chasing me about an issue, um, you know, 50 clients that haven't paid any horses at winning shows. So um, my wife constantly tells me that I'm a terrible um, multitasker. I actually think I'm an amazing multitasker. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot going on in my head. Um, but the impact of that is that I'm thinking about too many things at once. So I've sought out some things in my life that um, made it impossible for me to think about anything else. One of those is historic racing and um, making components for historic racing cars and then racing historic racing cars. And the thing I love about it is that they're so prone to crashing and killing people that you absolutely have to know, own and have an intimate relationship with every nut and bolt that goes onto it and have done it up yourself because you can't trust anyone else when you're doing you know, 150 kilometers an hour around the corner. So, um, <coughs> yeah, I would say I'm utterly obsessed with that, and if I don't have at least an hour or so of that in my week, I get cranky. Um, I also still compete as an old guy in competitions, um, and I pretend that I'm not, so I go as hard as I used to when I was a kid, so I still train four to five mornings a week, um, and that level of competition is the thing that sort of allows you to switch off. Uh, and two years ago, we had a baby, um, life got busy, we did a renovation, work was flat out, I stopped car stuff, I stopped competing, and I got fat and a stomach ulcer, and <laughs> it was funny because my wife ended up begging me to go back to doing those things, because she was just saying, you are the most miserable person in the world, if you don't have your um, down thumb. So I think it's something we've encouraged in the office to, to have breakout because if you don't go and do cultural stuff, if you don't see films, go to exhibitions, do sport, whatever it is, whether office or something, um, you need that switch off because um, you know, I presume this is the case in other design studios. I oh, know it's pretty much you get in and you're on. From the moment you sit down at your computer, your day's on, you're accountable, you're billing someone else for your time, therefore you can't fuck around with it. Um, so I think one of the most important things about staying creative, because creativity is a difficult thing at best of times, and if you want a career, for me, if you want a career in design space, you need to manage it so that you've got a long run rather than a short side. Um, and you need purpose, and it changes as you go through life, and this is something I've only realised in the last probably 12 months, but you know, at the start it was like survival, I've got to survive, I've got this business, I've got costs, I don't know what the fuck we're doing, how do I do this, money in the door, money out the door, where do we go? And then after a while you get a business that, you know, it runs, it goes, the money comes in, a little bit stays behind, the rest goes out, um, and the purpose shifts, and so for me, family, um, and changing the business to a more you know, from a less studio that I run to more a business that has other directors, other associates, practice managers that, you know, manage all the stuff that I don't like managing, like money and digital clients. Um, and a succession plan so that the little dot that you're in Oslo's doesn't fizzle out like a fading star when I get tired when I'm 50. Um, because there's lots of architects around that have created these fantastic architectural legacies and their businesses continue. But there's not that many design studios in Australia. And it's a younger industry. But I think it's a shame that a lot of design studios don't create that legacy. So my purpose is to create Bureau of North as this um, entity that embodies all the values that have made it what it is today, but that are allowed to continue into the future. Um, not 20 minutes to that. Um, so I didn't talk about space much, but um, that's because I don't really understand it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my 
one for me work on string party because you actually heard me talking about it once. I've got about five days in there. <laughs> it's not intelligent enough. Um, thanks very much. And that was an odd presentation for me. Um, so if you've got questions, I'd be interested to receive them.